In this video, we'll talk about 10 different royal tridents of Atlantis in the DCEU. First is the legendary trident of Atlan. Its origin goes way back to the ancient kingdom of Atlantis, where it was crafted for King Atlan from a metal known as Poseidon steel. Centuries later, it would be claimed by Atlan's descendant, Arthur Curie. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, the trident had a slightly different design and was used by Mera after Arthur's death. The weapon is capable of amplifying the natural powers of a true heir of Atlantis. It could create powerful shockwaves, and Arthur can use it to sense and command every creature in the ocean, making them fight for him. Next is the Black Trident. It's an ancient weapon forged by King Kordax, ruler of the lost kingdom of Necris. It was created with dark magic that turned Kordax and his people into monsters. Centuries later, it would fall into the hands of Black Manta, whom Kordax possessed. The trident also gave Black Manta the strength equivalent of an Atlantean. The weapon is powerful enough to match the trident of Atlan, and although it was broken in half, Black Manta occasionally used the two separate pieces as dual-wielding weapons. Next is Atlanta's Quindant. This five-pronged weapon belonged to Atlanta, former queen of Atlantis, and was passed down to her son, Arthur. Both mother and son were shown to use the weapon effectively to fight off invading armies. But unfortunately, the iconic weapon ended up broken into two halves by Orm. Next, we have Orvax's trident. It belonged to Orvax, former king of Atlantis, and was passed down to his son Orm who inherited the throne and would later even become Ocean Master. Made from the finest Atlantean steel, the trident helped Orm gain a reputation as an undefeated combat champion in his youth. Orm was even able to defeat his brother Arthur with it, but in their rematch, the trident of Orvax was shattered by the even more superior trident of Atlan. Next is Nereus's trident. It is owned by King Nereus, ruler of the kingdom of Zebel, and is made from a titanium gold alloy. One of its unique features is that it could fire these powerful plasma shots from a long distance. Next is Riku's trident. It was formerly owned by King Riku, ruler of the Fisherman Kingdom. The fishermen are a subspecies of Atlanteans who have evolved into fish-like creatures. The trident itself has a very intricate design, reflecting the personality of its owner who thrives for peace and knowledge. We never got to see the capabilities of this weapon, and it is presumed to have now been inherited by Riku's daughter, who currently rules the Fisherman Kingdom. Next is the Brine King's trident, owned by the King of the Brine Kingdom. The brine are a subspecies of Atlanteans who have evolved into crab-like creatures. This large trident has a more crude design reflecting the brutish nature of the warrior crustacean race that it represents. We also never got to see much of its abilities, as the claw that carried it was swiftly cut off in the midst of battle. Next is Valko's Lance. This weapon was used by Nuitas Valko, the now deceased former chief counselor of Atlantis. Valko actually used at least two different lances, as we saw him using a different one in his older days. The pole arm helps Valko conjure and manipulate seawater and perform Atlantis's ultimate offensive defensive technique, which he taught Aquaman to do. And then we have the legendary trident of Poseidon. Poseidon was one of the old gods, worshipped by both the Greeks and the Atlanteans as the god of the sea. Poseidon and his trident have only been portrayed in a painting-style flashback montage in the first Wonder Woman movie. Unlike his brothers Zeus and Hades, we never saw Poseidon in live action, although his legacy lives on with the Atlanteans. One by one, until only... And finally... A bonus mention for other tridents used by previous kings. We know that all seven of the Atlantean kingdoms have had rulers with their own unique tridents, and not all of those kingdoms have survived to the modern day. The ones we haven't mentioned yet are the Trench and the Deserters.
The trench have devolved into savage fish monsters, while the deserters have perished, with their ruins left behind in what is now the Sahara Desert.